Hey guys, welcome to RK Keynotes. In the previous video, I have shown you how to download, install, and configure ZAMP control panel for Apache server and MySQL database. If you have not yet configured, please do watch my previous video and get it done. In today's video, I'm going to talk about JDBC connection using MySQL database. So for this, these are all the five steps which you have to follow. The first step is to register the driver class. The second step is to create connection. The third step is to create the statement. And then we need to execute the queries. Finally, we need to close the connection. So for each step, we're going to use a method. So let's get into that. So to register a driver, we are going to use this for name method. And the syntax goes like this. So we are going to use MySQL. That is why I'm specifying that com.mysql.jdbc.driver. This is, this is to be followed. And to create a connection, we're going to use this get connection method along with driver manager class. And we need to specify the database name, the default username for MySQL is a root. And while installing, we have uh, never set uh, any password. But if you wish, you can set a password. As of now, we are going to leave it empty. OK. And the third step is to create a statement. So we're going to use a interface called a statement. Of course, that we know that there are uh, three ways to create a statement. Uh, we are going to discuss the rest of the two statements in upcoming videos. So here I'm going to use create statement method to create a statement. And the fourth step is to execute the query. And we are going to use a method called execute query. Also, we have two more methods. Again, I'm going to discuss that one in the upcoming videos. So this executed queries result will be stored in result set in the tabular form. Basically, it is a cursor which maintains a cursor which points to a particular row, right? And here we are going to iterate it using the next method. So if there is any record, and we are going to print it using system.out.println, and I'm saying rs.getInt1. One refers to the first column, and here, and this int refers to uh, the enrollment number or employment uh, you know, ID, something like that, which is in integer format. And this rs.getString2 refers to the second column. So string in the sense, uh, like where care, and the, these kind of data, which we can retrieve. So there is other way. You can see that I have used department name in double quotes. So either you can go for this uh, style of accessing a particular column, or you can write the column name itself. Both the ways, it works. All right. The fifth step is to close the connection. For security reason, we used to close the connection once you are done with the insertion, uh, updation, and deletion and all. Fine. So to start with, uh, we need to uh, click here on admin button of for this MySQL database. And why we are using Apache server in the sense, this Apache server is responsible to run our MySQL database in web browser. Fine. So that is the purpose of using Apache server here. And I haven't changed any port numbers. The default port number is 80. And uh, for MySQL, the deport, uh, default port number is 3306. If you want to change the port number, you should do it here. That we have discussed in the previous video. All right. So now let's click uh, on this admin button. And once you do that, you will get this dashboard of PHP My Admin in your browser. All right, now let's create a database. So if you click on this new, it will take you to this uh, particular option that is you can create a database. The database name is RK Keynotes. I'm going to click on create. And once you click on this create, your database will get created. And now it is created and it will automatically take you to the next step 
this table creation. So here the database got created and it is asking for the table name. And the table name is like let's say EMP. Uh, and the column names are going to be the number of columns are three. Let's create this. And in the next step, you need to specify the column names. If you want to do this as a hard code, then you should use this SQL tab wherein you can write create statement and uh, insert query and all these things. So as of now, I'm going to use this. Let's say um, we will call it as EID, employment ID, name, and city. All right. And the data type for EID is going to be int. And the data type for name is worker. And the data type for city is again the same worker. And the size for this is 30. And I'm going to say 20 here. OK. Then scroll down and then just select click on the save button once you do this your table will get created okay so you can see that the table got created you just click on this so it will display the structure for you like the number of columns and what type of data type we have chosen over here you can see this okay now let's insert a record so for that you have to click on this sql over here sql tab basically if you click on this yeah so here these buttons are available for you just click on insert and let's insert a record so insert into table name and then values uh, it is going to be 101 and the name is rf and let me say there are cities batch code okay and you can click on this go button and once you do this the query will get executed yes and uh, let's uh, go to sql tab again and we'll display the records from this table so so let's start from the table name that is emp and click on go over here and once you do this it will display the records for you so we have only one record in this particular table and we got the result over here three column names and then there is one record fine so we are done with the back end so now let's move to NetBeans. So I'm using NetBeans 16 along with JDK version 19. All right. So uh, if you haven't upgraded your NetBeans, do please upgrade. Go to File to create a new project. You should go to File and you have to click on New Project. And then you need to choose. You'll be having three options. As we have discussed earlier, we're going to use this Java with AND and uh, select Java application. Next. And then you can name the project as JDBC demo and click on finish button. Once you do this, your project will get created. First step is that you have to explore the folders and you need to understand the folder hierarchy okay let me close this
So here you can see the project folder has got created. And I'm going to open this uh, JDBC demo. This is the project. And you can see there are two folders one is source package and libraries. In libraries, you will see JDK 19. And if, and if you wish to change this libraries, you can add it um, over here. A right click and you can add a chart file or add different. Oh, here you can see that. Yep. Or add libraries. Then in source packages, we're going to have this package name called JDBC demo, and this is our file. So let me open this. Fine. So there is a package name and class name, and then uh, there is a main method public static void main. So let me delete all these common lines. Okay. So now uh, within the try catch block, we need to add the five steps for JDBC connection, which we have just discussed. So I'm going to have try catch block. And Okay, so within this try block, uh, I need to go with those five steps. So let me quickly uh, go for it. So this is the first step that is uh, to register the driver. You need to use a for name method. Okay, and the first step is let's import the SQL page. Import Java dot SQL dot star. Okay, fine. Then, um, so these errors got vanished, and you can see that this is the first step which we have discussed to register the driver, and the second step is to get the connection. So here, you can see that the JDBC MySQL in local host, the port number is three three zero six, and uh, my database name is RK Keynotes. The username is root and the password is, we don't have any password as of now, so I'll, I left it empty. Okay, now, and this is for my confirmation. I'm just using, uh, printing this connection established and then using the statement interface. So why I'm calling it as interface, I want to show you one particular hierarchy diagram over here. So this is the, most important thing yeah so you can see this so this is the list of classes and interfaces which comes under a sql package and you can see driver manager which we have used comes under class and rest all like connection result set statement um so all these things comes under interface all right Okay, let's get back to this. So the third step is to create a statement that we have done. And the fourth step is to, um, you know, execute the query. So let us, our table name is EMP. And I'm just going to display all the records from the table. We have only one record, fine. And I'm using result set uh, to iterate. Uh, I'm using next method uh, so that it will fetch the next record using the cursor and then rs.get in the first column in our uh, table let me go back to the table that is it is an uh, int right we have selected and then this is string and again the city we, we have selected varchar for name and city so that is why i'm using rs.get string again rs.get string so let me write here, okay. So this is one in the sense column number one and column number two and three. And finally, I'm just printing the that data fetched and then we need to close the connection. This is the fifth step. So we are done with this. Okay, so now let's run the program. I'm going to just run the file. You can right click over here and then you can say run or else you can click over here 
or else again you can right click on this project folder on the particular file and then you can use run file so once you do this uh, you will get a build successful message but not the output so there is one thing which we need to add that is the connector so you can search for the jdbc connector you can do a google search and you need to download you see this uh, it is showing build successful but you are not getting the output right so you have to add the connector i have already downloaded it downloaded it just go to libraries and this is my project folder right so libraries folder comes under my project folder and you just have to right click on it and go to add jar or folder click on this and this is my i have downloaded this mysql connector so i'm just going to use it open it open the folder and this is mysql connector so once you uh, select that one and you can see mysql connector is over here all right now let's run the project again and now now it will fetch the record for you Okay, we are almost done. So, connection established, and we got the output over here. So, we have fetched the record from backend, that means from MySQL database, into your NetBeans ID. So this is the procedure to connect your MySQL database with NetBeans. I hope that you understood this. Let me show you how I have downloaded this MySQL connector. So you just say MySQL connector. And we can go to this uh, MySQL products and connector J. Let me open one more tab. You can say download. Yeah, okay, this is already we got the result, and here. Uh, you need to select most important thing that is machine independent. So click on this select operating system and then you have to select yeah platform independent basically. Click on this and then this is just 4.8 MB of size. You have to just download this. Once if you download this, you can see that one in, in your download folder. Right? Uh, like this. Uh, RAR file and you just right click and extract it. So you can say extract to MySQL connector. Once you do this, you will get this kind of folder. Make sure the file is available. The jar file that is Java archive. So this is the uh, jar file which, ha which I have added in the libraries folder. Hope you got everything uh, from this particular video. If you like the video, hit the like button. And do subscribe my channel and follow the 